Today I'm going to show you how to make the pearl wheel bracelet. Now, um, I have made it to, I'm going to make today in our video this one with the crystal. And I have also made one with pearls here. With this one I used pearls and fire polish beads. This one I'm using crystal and bicone crystal. And this is exactly the same unit here except for I used crystal instead of a pearl that I made in the pearl wheel we ring. Oh, excuse me. I turned into Elmer Fudd for a minute. In the pearl wheel ring tutorial, I used exactly the same. This is pretty much the same except for I just used fire polish beads up here instead of crystals. So it's pretty much the same. It's just a little bit different look because the fire polish beads don't poke out like the bicones a little bit. So, um, a couple of things with this. Now, with this one, I made five units and it was just too long. It's just too big of a bracelet. It's uh, about eight and a half, eight, eight and a half inches. And um, that's a little too big for me. And if you want to make five units, then you most certainly can. I used a different type of clasping. This is the clasping I'm going to use today. The reason I did that was because I had so much length here. However, if I just took one unit away, I knew that it would still be too small for me. But if I used a big clasp, I could probably get away with just four. So that's why I did it this way. Also, while I'm sewing this, um, I'm so used to using the pearls, I didn't stop to think about the direction of the hole in the crystal here. You can see that I have one this way, one this way, one straight. So I didn't pay attention to that. When you're making one with crystal, you need to pay attention when you come out, when you end, and where you're going to connect, you need to make sure that all of your holes are facing the same way because I just it's just a detail that I didn't really notice until I was watching my video feedback and then I really noticed it especially the way the light hits on the video so the hole through the crystal needs to be lined up so wherever you're coming out where you're going to connect with your pearls you want to make sure that all of the holes of your crystal this one should be turned this way and so on and so forth should be the same other than that um, it's really a pretty easy little bracelet to make and um, we'll go ahead and look at how many beads we need and what we will need and I will have kits available for both the pearl version and the crystal version. I'll also have some with some fire polish, some with some crystal, a bunch of different colors. And If you don't like the clasp in my kits you can always send me a message on Facebook and say please change the clasp and I will put a different clasp. If you don't want this bigger one or if you want this kind or whatever you want. This is how I show you to connect in this one. If you want a smaller one that's a toggle we can do that too. Just let me know if you're interested. So let's get started and let's look at what we For need. For this project today I'm going to use some crystal 12 millimeter round kind of disco ball type faceted crystals instead of a 12 millimeter round pearl. Now I will have some kits available with these in my store if you're interested. Um, then you will need a four millimeter round pearl or round bead. It can be a drug, it can be a crystal, whatever you decide you want to use. And then you will, I am today I'm going to use two colors of Edo seed beads instead of like I did in the ring component. I only used one. I'm going to use a galvanized silver Toho and I'm going to use a clear crystal Toho. Eight O seed beads. And then you'll need an eleven O seed bead. I'm using a galvanized silver and a fifteen O seed bead. And today I'm going to use a a clear crystal. Toho 15 0 seed bead. You will also need some 4 millimeter round bicone crystals. Today I'm using a um, clear Swarovski crystal um, bicone. And then you will need a clasp. I'm using a rather large clasp and in my kits these will be included. However, if you're going to use something different, a smaller clasp, you may have to adjust the connections between your components or make another component to make um, your length of your bracelet. Of course, if you're going to make a shorter bracelet, then a smaller clasp will be good. So you'll just have to adjust according to how you clasp your bracelet today. To get started, thread onto your needle about three arms length of 
uh, fire line. Eight pound or six pound, I'm using eight pound, and I'm using an English beading needle size 10. You can also use a 12th, that works fine. Um, you will want to leave a length of um, whatever you have left over a fire line on your components as you do this, all four of them. So just go ahead and use a pretty good length. Now, um, two and a half, three is probably just fine. And then you're going to start by putting three or four, excuse me, four eight-o seed beads onto your needle like this. We're going to start this component exactly like we would start the ring component. So if you've already done the ring, you may want to just not watch this part. There's a few subtle changes. We will not dome the component like we do in the ring. And um, the order that I do this in, I may change a little bit. It doesn't matter though. It's going to be exactly the same end result. So we are going to go back up through all four of our beads that we have added onto our needle from the tail side up and pull. We're going to have a little loop like this and then we're going to go back up through the last or the first, whichever you want to uh, call it, 8 seed bead and we're going to grab onto our working thread and our tail and we're going to pull until we have a little unit that looks like this. And now we are going to sew back through all of these beads to secure them because we do not want to tie a knot because knots will get in the way in this particular design. So we'll just sew back through all of the beads in this little unit, doing them individually instead of trying to catch two at a time is always a good idea with right angle weave just to keep your shape. Once you get to where your tail is coming out, then you will want to go through that bead and then up through the next bead. And this is where we will start our weave. Now we're going to share this bead. We will have four beads in each component. So con since we're sharing this bead, we will only need to pick up three 8 seed beads onto our needle. We're coming out of this side. We'll go into the opposite side our thread is exiting and we'll pull our beads into position like this. Now we're coming out of the bead we're connecting to. We need to get up to the top bead to connect to it for our next unit. So we will sew through this bead and this bead. Make sure your tension is good, everything's nice and neat. Pick up three more 8 seed beads. You're exiting this side of your um, little bead. We're going to go into the opposite side that the thread is exiting from and pull. And then we're going to go through this bead and this bead to get ourselves in position to add our next unit up into the top bead here. We will make one more unit. Pick up three more seed beads onto your needle and then go into the opposite side where your thread is exiting. Now we're going to sew completely around this entire unit because this will be a connection unit to our 12 millimeter round beads. So we're going to go all the way around it. I'm just going to turn my work over so that it's in better position and I'm just going to sew through all four of these beads. <clears throat> When I get back around to the connecting bead, I will then sew back up to the top bead in my little unit. Now I'm in the connecting bead. I will sew up this bead and then into the top unit. I will then pick up my 12 millimeter round, in this case I'm using a crystal, and I will bring it down to my work. Now holding your little weave and your crystal is kind of tricky, so just do the best you can. Wrap 
the weave that you made around the crystal and then come into the top bead of your weave and then go back into the crystal and pull. Get just a tiny bit closer here. Now you can see that my thread is coming out just this side anchoring just one side of the bead. I'm going to go into the side that the thread is not coming out of to balance it and to pull it and anchor it onto my bead. And then I'm going to go back into my crystal. <clears throat> now on the opposite side, we're going to go back into the connecting bead, and then we're going to sew around this entire unit to make sure it's very secure and will not pull apart, and then we can cut our tail off and get it out of our way. So just go all the way around the entire unit on the top here. Go back down into your crystal, pull tight, and then just cut off your tail so that it's not in the way. And then we will anchor this just a couple more times. We will come through the connecting bead on the opposite side where we cut our tail off and where our needle is, of course, our thread is, and we're going to go ahead and sew around this entire unit now. Once you're coming out of, whoops, <laughs> fly, little bead. Now once you're coming out of the connecting bead, then you'll go back down into your crystal. Then you'll go back into your connecting bead on this side. And we will start our weave again. We will be connecting to this bead, so we will pick up three 8 0 seed beads. We will, our thread is coming out here. We're going to go into the opposite side and pull. Now, since this is a connecting unit, we need to sew all the way around the entire unit. I'm going to just turn it over and put my finger on top of it to hold it in position as best as I can. And just start to sew through all of the beads in this unit. If they kind of pull out of shape, it's okay. Once you get through your connecting bead and pull it, they'll go back into shape, just like that. Now we need to get back up to this bead here. So I'm going to sew through this one and this one. And I'm going to begin my weave again. Including this unit we just made, we will make five units. So we will pick up three more. We're coming out of this side of the bead. We're going to go into the opposite side of the bead and pull. Now we need to get to our top bead. So we'll sew through the side bead and the top bead and pull tight. Let's do this one more time. We're in our top connecting bead. We're coming out of this side. We're going to go into the opposite side and pull. And now we need to sew up to the top bead. We're coming out of our connecting bead. We will sew into the top bead. And we will do this until we have five units counting the one, the first one that we connected to the bead that's connected to the 12 millimeter bead. And we will be back. Okay, so I have done my five units. Now I'm coming out of my last one. I need to sew all the way around this one because this is going to be a connecting unit also. So 
as we have done with the other connecting units, we're going to sew all the way around the entire unit and make sure that it is very secure before we begin to connect to our um, large bead. So we'll just come out the top here. And then we're going to wrap this around our bead. And then you will see as it comes up around that you have two beads one here and one here but you do not have two side beads so to make our unit we're going to pick up an 80 seed bead we're coming out of here right right on this side we're going to go into the same side on the opposite bead just like this with our 80 seed bead and we're going to pull I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to do the same on this side I'm going to pick up an 80 seed bead and I'm going to go through the same bead I was going through to connect on the opposite side and pull. And now I will sew all the way around the unit that I just created. So we will just sew right up through. this entire unit a couple of times then I'm going to get to my connecting bead and I'm going to sew through the unit on the opposite side here Got tangled all the way around this entire unit to secure it. Now, if your beads are a little far apart, on these crystals, the units that I make, they, they come together pretty good. They're a little bit looser too in the weave. Whereas on the pearl, you have to pull it a little bit. And as you sew through with the pearl, it will pull your weave together. But on this one, with these little crystals, they seem to be just a tiny bit smaller and you don't really have to pull them together too much. Now I'm coming out of this bead right here. I am going to cross over this thread bridge here and go back into my crystal and go over to the opposite side. Then I am going to go into a bead on this side. Just I'm going to cross over the thread bridge and pull this thread down between two beads just like this and I am going to sew all the way around this unit then I'm going to sew around the unit next to it like that. Go through my connecting bead, cross the thread bridge, and go back into my crystal. Now that, pull really tight, that will anchor this little thing on here really well, the little weave. And with the ring, I did it a little bit differently. It doesn't matter. It's the same end result. I'm doing this a little bit more secure because, like I said, the weave is a little bit uh, looser on the crystal than it is on the pearl. Now I'm coming out of the hole of my crystal. I'm going to go into one of my side beads in my weave, just like this, and I'm going to pull my thread through. <clears throat> now I'm going to begin my weave on in these outside beads here. So I'm going to pick up, I'm going to use my clear 8-0s now. I hope you'll be able to see them well. But I'm going to pick up an 8 a pearl, and an 8 -o. and I'm coming out of this side I'm going to go into the next side and that's how I will start my weave 
this is in a complete unit. This eight oh, these two eight oh's, and my purl is a unit of right angle weave. And I also want to close in my weave around my beads. So I'm going to pick up an eleven oh before I move to my next unit. I'm I'm coming out at the anchoring bead here on the crystal. I'm going to go into the next one with an eleven oh seed bead on my needle, and I'm going to pull the eleven oh seed bead down in between the eight oh seed beads. Then I'm going to pick up an 80 and a pearl. And I'm going to come into this 80. I'm going to ignore the 11 0 I added and go into the 80 on my work that I'm anchoring to. Let's get real close for one minute so you can see. So we're going to avoid this little 11 0, go into the 80 and the 80 on our work, and we're going to pull just like this. And that's what you should have. Now, I need to fill in my little space here, so I'm going to pick up my 11 0 seed bead, go into my next 8 0 seed bead on my work, pull the 11 0 between the seed beads, and then I'm going to work a unit this way. So I'm going to pick up an 8 0 and a purl like this, and I'm going to come into this 8 0, avoid the 11 0 I just added, and go into the 8 0 on my work and I'm going to pull it tight. And again, I will pick up 11 O seed bead, place it between the 8 O's on my crystal. I will pick up an 8 O and a pearl, and I will come into the 8 O on the work already, in our previous unit, down into the 8 O on the crystal, and pull. One more time because I think I was out of frame and then I'll let you do this until we get to our very last unit and I'll show you how to connect it. We will go from 8-0 to 8-0 and pull our little 11-0 into place. We will pick up an 8-0 and a purl and we'll go into the 8-0 on our previous unit and into our 8-0 on our crystal and pull. We're going to do this all the way around until we just have two little spaces and one bead open on our work. And I will show you how to close that up. Okay, so I have sewed my little units all the way around until I have one 8 in the middle and two little spaces on either side here. Now, I'm going to add my last unit and I'm going to join it together by picking up an 11 0 seed bead and I'm going to go, I'm coming out of this 8 0, I'm going to go into this middle 8 0 right here. And just put my little 11 0 right in the space there. And then I'm going to pick up another 11 0 and slide from this 8 0 to this 8 0 and avoid the 11 0 on the other side of the 8 0 and pull through. Now, I need to get over to this bead so that I can add, so I can pull this bead, this bead, and this bead together with the pearl on top. So I'm going to sew around this unit until I can get over to where I need to be to add my pearl. So I'm going to go through this 8 here. Coming out of this one, I'm going to avoid the 11 -0, go up through the 8 go into the pearl, then go into the 8 here and the 8 in the center, avoiding the 11 O's on either side. I'm going to go up through this 8 right here, and now I'm going to pick up a pearl and go into the 8 I'm coming out here. I'm going to go into this one and back into the 8 in the center, avoid my 11 O, and then back up through this 8 now I'm going to sew through this one more time, this entire unit I just added, just to make sure it's secure and everything is um, going to stay in place. And when you're coming through this 8 in the center here, after you've joined it, it's a little difficult to get through without including the 11 But it can be done, just, just have to struggle a little there to get it. And then we're going to go up into the 8 on that side. We're going to straighten everything out. 
If you have a little bit of extra thread around your pearls, that's okay. You want to make sure that they're not all bunched up. We don't want to dome this one and we don't want it to cave like this. We want it to lay straight. Then we're going to, we're coming out of this 8 here. We are going to sew back into the pearl and the 8 here and turn it over so you can see and then we're going to go back into the 8 in the middle we're going to go down into the side bead in the original unit here and then into the top bead and here we will start adding our units again <clears throat> so we'll pick up an 11 o seed bead or excuse me an 8 o seed bead a pearl and an 8 o seed bead. Get the right colors. And then we will slide. We're coming out of this side. We're going to go into this side right here and pull it through. Then we'll pick up an 11 o seed bead. We're coming out of the connecting 8 o down here. We're going to slide into the next one. And we're going to do exactly the same thing all the way around that we did on this side. When we get to our last opening, I will show you how to close it one more time. Okay, so again, I have sewn all the way around until I have come to the point to where I have one 8 seed bead, two little spaces on my crystal here. So there's one seed bead or one 8 and then there's two spaces. So, I'm going to pick up an 11 o seed bead. I'm going to go through the 8 o. Whoops. Things are just going to fly today, I guess. And then, we're going to pick up another 11 o and go from this 8 o to this 8 o in the middle of this unit here. And see if we can manipulate up through the 8 o here too. So if I can come through this one and this one here, it's a little easier than trying to avoid that 11 o and come up through the face of it. <clears throat> now I'm going to sew through my pearl so that I can get over to the center of my unit here. I want to work from this bead, this bead, and this bead and add a pearl. So I'm going to come down into this 8 o seed bead right here and then into the middle 8 attached to the crystal and then up through this 8 next to my pearl and then I'm going to pick up a pearl and I'm going to go from this seed bead to this seed bead and down into the middle 8 pull them then come back up through this 8 here to secure it and then up through my pearl again. Now again, straighten everything up. Make sure that your weave is centered on your your little crystal. Everything's good. And we're going to sew around this unit one more time so that it is secure. So I'm going to go back into my 8 -o, My 8 on my um, work here. Try to avoid this 11 if at all possible here. <clears throat> she doesn't seem to want to happen for me there we go and then up through this one up through my pearl And now we are going to begin to add our bicone crystals. Make sure you straighten everything out and make sure everything is looking nice and not bunched or anything. <clears throat> like I said, if you have a little bit of extra thread where the pearls are, that's okay. We'll, we will be covering that up. Now we're going to pick up a bicone crystal. We're going to work these units into a right angle weave with our crystals. So, as we said earlier, each right angle weave is four 
beads. So we've got two on our unit. We're going to add one with a crystal like this. We came out of this one, we're going into the opposite one. Then we're going to pick up another crystal to complete our four. And we're going to go from this bead to this bead and pull. Then we're going to go into the crystal, the first one we added. And it's going to be part of this unit here. So now we have three. We're going to go into the pearl. <clears throat> we're going to pick up our fourth bead which is a crystal. We're going to go into this bead here. And now we have four beads. We just need to join them. So we're going to go into this crystal here. Work our way back over to the bicone and this secures our unit. So now we have three beads for our next unit. We're going to go from our first bead to our second bead. We're going to pick up a bicone crystal to be our third bead and we're going to join it with our fourth bead over here. Then we're going to sew into our first bead again and our second bead and our third bead and begin again. We're going to do this all the way around until we have one opening and I will show you how to close it. So I've had it, added my bicone crystals all the way around until I am to the point to where I have two loose bicones and two loose pearls. Now we will join these together. This is an entire unit right here, these four um, beads. So we'll just join them together. A hint as you're doing this, when you're going around adding your bicones, don't pull them really, really tight and pull your beads together really, really tight. You want them to be neat. You want them to be somewhat tight, but you don't want them really, really tight because when you come to this point, then your beads will be spread further apart and you will have a difficult time drawing these four beads together. And they will look kind of crooked and weird and funky. So we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and join these. We're coming out of this bead. We're going to go into this bead. And then into the bicone on this side. And then into the pearl on this side. And then back into the first bicone we started in. And then we're going to give this a little bit of a tug. And be careful because this crystal can cut your thread. If you pull sideways on that like too tight, but you gotta pull it some, just a little bit. Give a couple little tugs to draw these beads together. But like I said, these bicones, they can cut your thread. Whoa! And you can just throw your beadwork again like I've been doing all morning. There we go. So I'm drawing them together like this. And you can see each time I go around, it draws them a little bit better. This one's a little crooked, so I'm going to go back into it one more time. Go up through this bicone. Straighten them out a little bit. I'll give them a little tug just like that. And then I'm going to go into this pearl, the next unit over, and pull. Now I'm ready to start my next embellishments. So I'm going to place a little pearl on top of all of my pearls. My little Where my pearls meet, I'm going to put one on top of them. So I'm going to pick up an 11 o seed bead, a pearl, an 11 o seed bead on my needle, like this. And then I'm coming out of this side of my um, pearl. I'm going to go into the opposite side and the opposite pearl like this. And pull my thread through. And my little embellishment will just pop on top. Then I'm going to go into the bicone crystal right next to the unit I'm working in and then up through the next pearl. And here I am ready again to make my next embellishment. So I'll pick up an 11 L, and then I will pick up a bicone crystal, or nope, not a bicone. I guess you could put bicones on top of there. I thought about that to make my crystal show more, because this design kind of buries my crystal. So you could conceivably put a crystal on top of there. 
but we're going to do it like this. So we're going to go from here to here. If you want to be even more blingy than we are right now, this is, um, you can put your bicones on here. I am doing this because somebody had said, I think her name was Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I think she had said she was a bling girl and she wanted to do this with a Rivoli, but she hadn't seen the design yet and didn't realize that you can't do it with a Rivoli. So I decided that I would make this with a crystal. And that's why, so there you go, Kathy. Here's your bling. And like I said, you can put a bicone where I'm putting this pearl now to make it even blingier if you want. So just continue doing this. We're going to go up through this bicone and then through the pearl, and we're just going to continue adding this all the way around. Now I have finished adding my little pearl on top of my pearls all the way around. And my very last unit, I just then popped up into the bicone crystal right next to it. So I came out here, I slid through the bicone. Now I'm going to slide through one of the front pearls here. And we're going to add our last embellishment. Now, the reason we add this last one is because you can see your thread bridge all the way around. Let me get real close and you can see how thready it looks, especially under the magnification. It's not so bad when you're not magnified, but you can see the little thread bridge in between each one. We're going to cover that with 15 OC beads by adding three and sliding through. On the ring, I added two simply because it kind of buried my crystal when I added three and I wanted to see my crystal a little more. In this one, I'm using clear crystal ones so that I can still see my crystal a little. As you're working through this, you kind of tend to bury your crystal. So I'm going to pick up three 15 O seed beads. I'm coming out of this pearl here and I'm going to slide into the very next pearl in line here. And just pop these three little 15 O seed beads right in between. You can do two if you want. But I've saved this till the very last step because before I didn't do it as the last step. And it's pretty tight in between the beads to get your needle through if you use three. And like I said, it buried my crystal. But with the clear here and doing this as the last step, you can add three and it fills the space in better. So you can go all the way around this entire side and then sew up through one of your bicones and then through a pearl on the opposite side and go all the way around on the opposite side. And we'll be back. Okay, I have finished putting my 15 O seed beads in between the pearls on both sides. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now, I'm coming out where I ended with my last 15 O seed beads right here. I'm going to then just sew up into this 11 O seed bead here. And then into my pearl here. and I am just going to leave my thread there and I'm going to make four more or three more units. I, I'm going to make with this bracelet today, I'm going to use four units. Now if you want to make a longer bracelet, you will need to make five units or you can make the segments in between a little longer, use a smaller, bigger clasp. There's several, anytime you're doing a component type bracelet, you, you have to kind of manipulate several different aspects to change your length. Sometimes just one more component is just too big. And sometimes one less compu component is just too small, but anything in between doesn't work either. So sometimes you have to adjust your um, the way that you join them together, or sometimes you have to adjust your clasp size. So you just have to kind of work that out. I made one with five units and it was too big. So I'm going to try to make one with four and see if we can get to about seven, seven and a half inches. And if you want six, it's probably fine to go ahead and, and um, either use a smaller clasp, shorten your units in between, or drop a, a, a unit also. So anywhere between three and five units is what we'll be using. I'm going to make four, so go ahead and make four of these. Leave your string on each one. Um, some of your threads will be longer than others because we're not perfect when we measure them out, so um, that's okay. 
just leave them on there when you're done and just like this and this is what your finished unit will look like and we'll be back after we have four of them or however many you have decided to make so here are my four components I've left <clears throat> excuse me I've left the thread on each one and I have the thread coming out on each one of one of the pearls on top here let's get close so you can see what I'm talking about I just have it coming out of one of these little pearls here and you come up through the 11 out and then just exit one of the little pearls on each one of them that's how your thread should be coming out and you will want to face your thread part all of them on in the same direction now on your very last unit you want your longest thread to be on your last unit because we're going to connect it this way and then we're going to have to sew around and connect our clasp so the unit with the longest thread should be the very last one anyway we are going to start by joining this component to our um, clasp here one end of our clasp okay so to join it we're going to put our needle onto the thread and we're going to line it up we want to have our two little units our our two little beads that we're going to work out of lined up with our clasp this way when we work when we join our clasp we'll be working out of these two and when we join our next um, component we'll be working out of these two that'll leave three pearls on top and three pearls on bottom and that way we know that everything will end up even so now we are going to begin to join this by picking up an 11 o seed bead you can either use a crystal or a pearl. I think I'm going to use a crystal. And then, actually, two 11 seed beads, a crystal, and two 11 seed beads. And then we're going to drop these down. Then we're going to pick up a pearl and drop it down. Now we're going to be joining everything to this pearl and then we'll join the pearl to the clasp. So how we're going to do this is we're coming out of the top of this little guy here. We want to pick up another two 11 seed beads. A bicone crystal, two 11 O's. And now we are going to go over to this pearl. We're coming out of the top of this one. We're going to go into the bottom of this one. This will give us kind of a twisted look with our um, connection here. So we're going to go into the bottom of this pearl here. Get close. And pull. And this is what you should have. Just kind of a little loop. One from the top and one into the bottom, just like that. And then we are going to, hold on, my camera just isn't right. I'm sorry. There we go. Then we are going to pick up another two 11 O seed beads and a crystal and two 11 O seed beads. Like this. And then now we're coming out of the top of this one. We are going to go into the top side and then exit out the bottom side behind our other one here. We're going to go through the top of the pearl and exit out behind the 11 0 of our other little strand we made. And pull it like this. And then we're going to pick up two an 11 OC or two 11 OC beads, a crystal, and two 11 OC beads. And then we're coming out here. We're going to go underneath and going to the bottom of this pearl here. And when it lays down, it'll be kind of, kind of a little cluster, kind of twisted effect here. So, we're going to sew up now 
through all of these beads right here. We're coming out of this pearl right here. So we're going to sew up all of these little beads to get to the pearl on the top. And I'm going to go through the pearl. And now we are going to pick up two 11 OC beads and a pearl. And drop those down. And we're going to go through our clasp. Oops. Just pull it through the clasp, then go back down through the pearl, and just the pearl. On the top here. Sorry, I'm trying to sew left-handed. I am not left-handed, so sorry about that pause there. And now we are going to go into this little pearl on the opposite side. So we need to pick up two 11 o seed beads and then we'll go into this little pearl here. Okay, now what we have to do to secure this clasp and make sure that it's um, not going to break or fall off is we need to sew up through these 11 O's, sew through our pearl, come through our clasp, come back down through our pearl, sew through the 11 O's, and sew back through this pearl. And we're going to do that. Go around this unit several times, as many times as you can, and then we'll travel down and tie off this thread. So go ahead and do that. Secure your clasp until you get thread tight or um, you feel like you have enough thread going through and we'll be back. So I have secured my clasp and then after sewing through I just sewed down one of my strands and came out through this little pearl here. Now I will continue to sew up through I'll sew up through another one of these strands and then through the pearl here and then I will come through one of these bicone crystals and just tie off my thread. A um, little half hitch knot. I'm not going to continue with that because this film is getting long, but just go ahead and tie this little guy off and then we'll connect our next component. So I secured my clasp. Then I just sewed back down through all of my little strands I just added. Just go through the pearls and go around and just sew through all of them, reinforce them. Then I came up through one of the pearls and um, tied off in a half hitch knot. Now, um, just sew through the best you can, however you can find, staying in your thread path, and then tie it where you want. It's a little tight and a little difficult to get through some of the beads on the component itself, but you will find a way to get through them and just go ahead and tie it off. There's no particular way, just what works best. Tie off that thread and cut it off. Then we will move to our next component here. We're going to grab Let's see which one do I want. Uh, this one. So we're going to lay out our next component. We're going to put our needle onto the thread of that component. And we're going to connect basically the same way we did with this one, just a little bit differently because we're going to be working into two pearls instead of just one. Okay, so I am coming out of this little um, bead right here. I want to make sure that I'm lined up with two of them and um, everything's going to line up nice. So I'm coming out of the bottom of this little bead here. Now, if you're coming out of the top of the other one, it doesn't matter. Just as long as as you're going through, you go through to the opposite side of the um, bead that you're connecting to on the opposite component. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up an 11 o or two 11 o's. Excuse me a bicone crystal and two 11 O's and I am coming out of the bottom of this bead here I'm going to go into the opposite bead over here on the opposite side like this so I'm laying at a diagonal now as you can see then I am going to go ahead and pick up two more 
11 of seed beads and a bicone crystal and two 11 of seed beads. They're arguing with me today. Come on, get on my needle. Okay. okay. So I'm lying at a diagonal here. I'm coming out of this side. I'm going to go into the back side because I'm coming out of the front side of that pearl. I'm going to go into the back side of this one. And I'm going to pull. What I'm doing is just creating kind of a little crisscross effect here. Now I'm going to pick up two more 11 O's, a bicone crystal, and two 11 O's. And I'm going to go into this seed bead here, or this pearl here. Actually, I'm coming out of the inside one here, this hole here. So I'm going to go to the opposite hole, and I'm going to go through right here. And pull. Now I'm going to pick up two 11 of seed beads, a bicone crystal, and two 11 of seed beads. Let's get a look closer so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm coming out of the bottom of this little pearl here. I'm going to go into the opposite side of this pearl. It's kind of buried under here. I'm going to go into this one. And I'm just going to push it through and pull it through the back here so that my thread doesn't tangle with everything. And that's the way that will look. Now, if some of them are looser than others, you just pull on them until you can get them tight, just like that. Now, we are going to sew into our work on our component here. So I'm going to turn my work over. I'm going to go down into this little 11 OC bead here. Make sure that your stuff doesn't get loose, your, the things that you just added, all of your little crisscrosses, and then go into the pearl back here. Now it's a little tight to get between these beads. You can go into as many as possible. I just went through the pearl here, then I went through the 15 O's, and then I just went through the... Um, other pearl there. However you can get through, there's no specific way. Just make sure that everything stays tight here and then grab a half hitch knot between the beads here. You can go up under these 15 O's and grab a half hitch knot, pull. Then I'm going to hop into this bicone crystal here in my work. And I'm going to sew down through these two. And I'm just going to grab another knot here. And wherever you can find that you can do this and hide your thread is fine. There's no specific way. I'm just going to hop back up into this 11 O so I can hide this little knot. Now you can do this as much as you want, as make it as secure as you would like. I'm going to stop there for the sake of time and I'm going to go ahead and cut this thread off. And we're going to continue with our units. I will add one more for you and then you will add the fourth and your last clasp. Thread your needle onto your next unit here. I have a little bump in my thread here. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to pick up two 11 O seed beads. Oops, I'm not coming out through my pearl either. Make sure that you're coming up through a pearl here. Even everything out and see what side you want to use. I think I'm going to use. Hmm, that side is fine. It doesn't really matter. They're both pretty much the same. So now I'm going to pick up two 11 O seed beads 
and a bicone crystal and two 11 OC beads and I'm just going to do some crisscrossing again so I'm coming out of the bottom of this pearl here so I'm going to go into the top of this opposite one here just like this and pull my beads together here <clears throat> and then I'm going to pick up two 11 of seed beads and a bicone crystal and two 11 of seed beads drop them down I'm coming out of the front of this bead here I am going to go into the back of this bead here And that's what gives your crisscross effect is just going through the opposite side of the opposite bead. Now we're going to work over to this bead. <clears throat> so two 11 O's, a bicone crystal, and two 11 O's. Of course, if you don't want to mess with the crisscrossing, you can just sew them together too, uh, the, the, however you want to. Okay, so we're coming out of this side of this bead. We're going to go into the back side of this bead like this and pull it down. Now we're going to pick up two more 11 O's, a bicone crystal, and two 11 O's. And then we're going to go from this bead to the back. We're coming out of the front. We're going to go to the back of this bead right here. Try to avoid the 11 O's, just kind of make it an angle so that you shoot out the very back of the unit, or the component, I mean. And then just pull your thread through this way. Like this. And that's what that should look like. Now, do the same thing, sew into your work and tie it off, and then grab your next component and add it and then we'll put the clasp on and we should be done. Okay, so I had enough thread in after I connected my third little component. So I just sew it around to where I am ready to come out of a pearl on this side. And I will attach my component with this thread instead of um, tying it off and cutting it off. So I'm going to connect my fourth component and then I can use my thread that I have in reserve over here for my clasp. So if you can do that, go ahead and do it that way. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm back. I have finished adding my fourth component and the other side of my clasp here. And I have put it on so you can see what it looks like. I'll take it off and let you see what it looks like laying down too but it's kind of pretty. I kind of like the way this clasp is too. Now of course you can use a smaller clasp with this. You don't have to use this big of a clasp. Um, I found that if I made five units or five components that it was way too big for me. But if I made four I thought it would be too small. So I used a large clasp. You can also reduce the size by using a smaller clasp. You can also use just one seed bead on either side of your crystals in your joint, too. You don't have to use two 11 O's, a crystal, and two 11 O's. You can use one. That will shorten it also. Um, there are several ways to shorten it. Now, when I make these kits, I'll make some with pearl, I'll make some with crystal, and I will add five of the large size beads. That way you can go up a size, too, if you'd like, up a component, if you want and just use a smaller clasp or, or however you want to do it. But um, these are the clasps I will include too unless you specify you want a smaller one. And you can do that by leaving me a message on um, Facebook. Um, other than that, you should be able to change it around. If you have five beads then and you only use three because you're making a smaller bracelet, then you have a couple to make earrings or you just make a component and hang them as earrings or perhaps you'll have a couple left and, and you can make a couple rings with them. So anyway, that's how that works. Let's take it off and 
Have a peek at it. <clears throat> and that's what it looks like. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.